Hey, my name is Chance. I'm a van builder in Victoria, BC. I just finished this new project of mine. It's a 2008 Sprinter van behind me. Uh, there's a theme towards woodworking and a rustic look of a cabin feel, west coast. And there's also a really cool mural that my friend made and it has like a bit, bit of a special place in my heart. So yeah, with excitement, I'm gonna show you this van. open space in the front. Decided to do like a really simple shoe rack here. That was a, uh, a want for him. And um, we got this nice folding table that we decided to put up. So he does have a choice to keep it open for like a hangout space, or you can have this um, for chopping vegetables or even sitting down with your laptop with a view. I think that was really important. Um, he also wanted a towel rack to dry in the sun. So I thought that was kind of cool with a little hook. And this is a, a pretty easy mechanism that just folds down. And uh, it doesn't move at all when you're driving. It's tight enough to just stay in place. In the kitchen, we got a two burner propane. And uh, he specifically wanted uh, an, an espresso machine, which is fairly uh, energy consuming, but it was kind of a priority. We went with uh, a couple cabinets up top with the push button lever for extra storage and we decided to keep the middle part open so that uh, when you're cooking or making dishes there's not a it's not so far in, in in the face we also decided to keep a space underneath the cabinets so that you can have your, your toes when it's more of a, a comfortable so it doesn't yeah it doesn't hit when you're cooking very simple storage over here we got three basic shelves. We're planning on putting some baskets in there to keep it all uh, contained. And then there's a bit of a lip so it doesn't come flying out when you're when you're driving. Also these mason jars were kind of a, a fun idea. Uh, you can just put all your dry goods in there. Right now I just have pine cones and such <laughs> uh, for aesthetic purposes but um, I think it's really nice to uh, easy to get. If you need rice or anything you can kind of just cook like that. Yeah, with the galvanized sheet there, I came to a halt a little bit. Uh, I put it on and I was kind of like perplexed with the look of it and how I could tie it into this organic looking uh, countertop in the black accents. But it's fun how with builds you start something and you if you think something looks off, you literally have to play with... You have to take time and sit down and like improvise. Um, so there's there's moments of like actually sitting down in your space and like not being so analytical. It's more of like sitting down and releasing your inner uh, child or artist to to let let flow what needs to happen. And that's kind of I'm pretty happy with it, you know. But um, there's a bit of uh, anxiety in that area for me. <laughs> the countertop is uh, it's probably the heaviest, obviously the heaviest piece in the van and um, I wanted to go with kind of like a, a bang in that for the look of the size and the kind of a uh, yeah just like a, a really earthy feel and uh, it's actually a local cut uh, piece of uh, cedar that we uh, that we gathered and I'm really happy with it I think it looks it's got some really nice grains and I, I kept it kind of rough looking too I could have really polished it but I kept it a bit organic we went with um, an undermount sink, which I think it, it looks really interesting. It shows off a bit more of the wood. Uh, instead of having stainless steel cover the sides, it's, it just shows off a bit more of that. The only thing is that if you put it under mount sink, you do have to realize that you do have less room for your, your drainage. So your actual plumbing has to be really shortened up, which I'll show you later. We actually went for a foot pump in this build. The main reason was, to, for my customer, it was, um, one less thing to break, and just a bit less power and the noise too. 
and I kind of threw in the water efficiency part of it. You can, each pump you can kind of control uh, the amount of water coming out. I cut out a space here so that it wasn't kind of it wasn't in the way. So now we can just I can just fit my foot in there like this. We opted for a fridge under the stove. We have a rollout fridge that uh, instead of having to reach in, you can actually slide out on these these levers because it's a top grab. And we got the propane tank in there as well with uh, the CO2 monitor. That's a must for everyone that lives in a van that has propane. Uh, doors ju are just on magnets for now and I feel like that it's been working great so far. Um, I do recognize that there's uh, when you use a lot of cedar wood, there can be expansion and contraction. Uh, so you might have to adjust your, your, your magnets after a month or so. There, there's definitely some, some push and pull. And uh, in here we left room for uh, the solar control and one of the batteries. I did not do the solar in this one. We uh, hired an electrician that uh, really, I really wanted to be um, done properly and uh, I'm still a novice at it. So I, I do like to hire people that are really good at something that create a, a project that's really complete and also supporting friends is something that's really important to me. Another battery here with the inverter that you can have your plug-ins here. So what runs off the 12 volts? We have these LED lights. There's three of them all through the van. I do feel like they're a bit of a white look. I do personally like the warm white, um, but they, they, do the, they really do light up the place. And we will be adding some some nice uh, like string lights for like more if you're looking for more of a mood. So here we have I kind of wanted to build a wardrobe type of thing here, um, something that you can hang things. Um, I'll show you inside in a minute. But with a huge drawer, we can put a lot of things in this one. It's kind of a massive drawer. You can put all your pants and socks, whatever camera gear, whatever you need. And in here, just a very basic hanging system. It was kind of a priority in this build to be able to hang things and not be all wrinkly, just have it nice and accessible. Underneath here, um, I kind of wanted to go with alternate color on this. Uh, so there's a uh, cedar and then spruce. And uh, the toilet's actually under here. It's a Camco brand and a bit of garbage space there. So under the sink, so very simple, uh, in and out, um, fresh water, and then your gray water here. Since you have a, an undermount sink, there's a bit of a, um, a height restriction that you need for your gray water. So we had to opt with a smaller container for that. Under the bed here, since there's the opening doors on both sides, we opted for a solution for not too many doors opening at once. So this one's actually built in a slide system. Uh, so there's a groove on the top and a groove on the bottom uh, to allow for sliding. Like this. So now you can have access to all your underneath your bed uh, in a non-clumsy way, I would say. Yeah. These cabinets are mounted with push buttons and they also have a hydraulic system on the side, just to keep that's for van life for you. Uh, <laughs> just to keep it up, because no one wants to balance it on their heads. So there's three of these in the van. So yeah, one over there and here, and then over the bed there's also one. Just a very simple build, um, efficient. We opted for, a, I would say, like a fairly large bed. Um, it's not the most uh, space efficient but the priority was a nice lounging area, a uh, hangout area, and as you can see there's a beautiful painting in the back that uh, will make lounging that much better. Okay so the mattress used for this it's actually custom made. Yeah it's about four inch uh, foam and on top it's a even it's a full length custom cut um, memory foam. And there's a lot of aeration in this one. You kind of see there's, uh, it's really, it's hold. And underneath, 
we drilled a bunch. Because when he first brought the van in, it was a full platform, and we found quite a bit of mold. So I spaced them out like this, and we can always add a bit more if needed. But this is kind of a test to see if that's enough aeration for for mold control in the vans. As fellow van lifers know, you can get quite a bit of mold underneath your, your mattress. Behind the walls, we have a fair amount of spray foam. And uh, also, we went with the one-inch styrofoam. And where we could, we would we would stack it. So there's a it's all styrofoam in here, and then it's just like a ton and groove uh, wood that we brand nailed in. Very simple. We did lift it at fairly high, not quite as high as some builds, but there's quite a bit of room underneath for storage, and we did put a wall, um, so it's kind of a half and half storage. We also spray painted the doors black just to create a bit of a more of a an ease of integration towards the the art um, and the paneling. It was a kind of an older white look. Hi, I'm Kashi. I'm the artist who painted this painting. I wanted to bring something that was immersive and uh, beautiful and powerful to this space that will contribute to the already existing beauty within this van. I wanted to do something that was uh, cutting edge and still uh, a new genre of art, which is called visionary art, which is based off of um, more of a unifying and spiritual base of artwork. The theme of uh, this mural has to do with royalty and um, empowerment and um, just a rising of um, power within uh, the beholder that I am trying to capture um, with the light emanating from the center. Thanks guys for checking out the van. If you're interested in seeing what I'm doing or if you're interested in any van builds, I'm open for the summer. So my company name is Midnight Moth and you can also find me on Instagram uh, with The Life of Chance. I do a little bit of YouTube if you do want to stalk me there a little bit, that's fine too, at the life of chance. And yeah, I just really appreciate you stopping by and uh, seeing what I love to do. And if you're interested in any of my other work, um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Cashy Visionary Art. Hi, I'm Forrest. I'm Emily. And this is Ronnie, and uh, we're all part of the different media team. So if you guys enjoyed that alternative dwelling episode you just watched, there's a playlist popping up now where you can continue watching. Or you can go to our second channel where we travel around in this 1989 Toyota motorhome that we restored. We have all sorts of videos detailing the build that we did, what our life is like living on the road. So go ahead and check that out in the description below.